I, I will present only one project which is built as a, a museum in Brazil, in Porto Alegre. I like to present only one thing because in that way I can explain how it began, uh, how the concept became uh, good for development and then through the, the construction how things went on. Uh, it's a museum for the collection of a very good Brazilian painter, Ibere Camargo. Uh, that lived almost all life in Porto Alegre, in the south of Brazil. He's not as well known as Portinari, for instance, but his quality is great. Only Portinari worked uh, with Corbusier, uh, was in the United States, so became very well known. Uh, and uh, he had a short passage uh, in Europe when he was young, where he worked with Kiriko, and then went to Porto Alegre and lived there. And a group of friends and sponsors and the widow of Iberé uh, organized a competition, invited four or five architects for a museum for the collection. And my first reaction was to say, no, Brazil is very far, particularly Porto Alegre, and I have some doubts about competitions, some uh, not so good experience, because if we win, okay, if we lose, okay, we lost. But uh, when we win and then nothing is made, is not built, uh, is, is hard. So first reaction was, no, I, I can't. But then they insisted and they avoid me, um, video, photos, and very kind contacts by telephone. And uh, I was very impressed with the photos, with the landscape. And I said, okay, I'll go there, I'll make it. Uh, but I did not go. I made in Portugal the competition, and I said, if I win, then I go to Porto Alegre. Uh, the paintings of uh, Iberé generally are big canvas, has a, a rather dramatic character. Uh, here we can see probably the influence of Kirik with Natur Mort, but also he made some very delicate work as this drawing of a bicycle, one theme used much through life. And uh, I received a call saying, we want your project. And then I went to visit. Uh, I developed executive drawings and the construction began. I say that the people involved in the construction were fantastic people, the sponsors and friends, the enthusiasm of the widow, and uh, the, the more important sponsor um, charge one of the people of his staff uh, to be the coordinator in Brazil and contact with us as we worked in Porto with the engineers, all the team was Portuguese, but we made a lot of uh, visits to, the, to Porto Alegre, and this young engineer called Canal, very nice person, very competent, he came uh, many times also to Portugal and was established uh, a, a, a true team that worked with great enthusiasm. Uh, in the, this second visit, the building or third visit was going on. And you can see uh, it is placed in a hole in a hill uh, open to the river. It's an enormous delta. And uh, nearby there is a tower and the rest is a luxurious vegetation.
as you can see here, the hole. And uh, I was much preoccupied because the area was small. Uh, I had not much space. And uh, that was influent in development of project as I had to put the main area in the deeper part of the ground. And then as this triangle was less deep, I put some parts of program that have a, a certain autonomy and could have a, a smaller area to solve the problems. So, step by step, I began considering the problems. Uh, one problem was how to take a big car for the exhibitions, temporary exhibitions, uh, as I had only a road, marginal road, only one underground area, convenient as the water is very near. And I needed that area underground for archives and other parts of the program, where to put parking and so on. At the same time, I became more and more uh, uh, enthusiastic about the project and a lot of memories from childhood, some came to my mind. First reaction was very normal when a European and more a Portuguese that lives in small country arriving to the new world. Uh, Brazil uh, has this sensation of space, the, the, the enormous delta. Uh, also in contrast with small hole, that was an uh, interesting contradiction. But this idea of space, how big the world is. And the other thing was memories of things that my father told me when, when I was a child, uh, as he, he, he was born in Brazil. And so he would tell stories about the climate, the animals, the landscape, and I received all this information with seven or eight years, so it came to my mind. I began, as many times I begin, with uh, sketches. So this is before the competition, I began preparing. And usually, uh, I prefer to begin immediately putting some things in the paper, even without knowing deeply the program and the topography, the measures, and so. Uh, I, I like to have a first immediate reaction, putting to go together the few things that I know already and the, the memories I received and the sensation of arriving there. And then, gradually, I receive more information and we have a, a possibility of making a critic to what we put as hypothesis. And then there is like a bombardment with critic to different ideas. Some are almost crazy, but they make possible not forget possibilities. It's like a tour around the problem uh, without a preoccupation of being rigorous. But yes, with, with the preoccupation of asking someone working with me to put in the limit things in the computer, uh, the topography, the right dimensions, and helping me in the analysis of the hypothesis I put in, in the paper. So in the first sketches, I had a lift, you see the, the hole and the lift, because I realized that I had no space for parking. This was a one cent road and I could not occupy it with parking. Underground I couldn't do, then I thought I put it up, there is free space. But that free space was inside 
a residential area and exp expensive residential area. And then by problems of money and also reaction of people, families living there, I realized this was not possible. And I had to think in another solution, but uh, much time I, before this uh, knowledge of impossibility, I made different sketches. And as you can see, the, the museum was a low building. Uh, I did not yet dominate the program, so my idea was the vertical, uh, with reference to the lift I had seen in Bahia, in another Brazilian town. By the sea, there is a lift that comes down. And uh, uh, step by step, I read, began reading the program and looking to the site in the, in the plans, and I realized that I should make a, a high building. I co could not make a low building as it was here, but growing up in vertical. Still the same phase, and here already you can see a whole building, very complicated, with curves and so. And uh, sometimes with uh, light entering in the center, and uh, sometimes with curves as going there, of course, I came not the observation direct, but the remembrance of Mimaya and that brilliant generation that I knew when I was in first year of my class, my school, and appeared in the school, the book Brazil Builds. And it was a shock for us that we're coming from the agony of a Bozar school uh, and suddenly had a generation of new, young, brilliant architects. In these sketches appear some ramps here, very strange, things like that. Uh, why ramps? Well, everybody in museums made ramps, not only Frank Lloyd Wright of, or Corbusier. Everybody is uh, some help for trying to find the atmosphere of a museum building in this town. Uh, a museum has always a special character in the town. Uh, by different reasons, because usually uh, there are a, a, a rather good place that is chosen for this public building related with culture and uh, social life in the town. So it's possible to get a good site and a good area around. Not as good generally as uh, here in these archives, but rather good. The other thing is that when we walk in a, in a town, in any town, I think, we pass by a building and we say, ah, that is Municip Municipal Museum or National Museum. There is something that I cannot exactly uh, mention that makes, gives character to a museum. It's not only publicity about the exhibitions, outside is some special care. Uh, maybe sometimes the, the, the few openings because the museum needs space inside wall for the exhibitions, but some uh, lights coming from the high, so the entrance, the glass of, for entrance of the, and so on. Then when we make a project for a museum, we have this kind of, in a way, kind of trauma, and we are anxious to make something special. One of the items of development of project is to destroy these preconcepts and arrive to the character in a natural way and related with what is around, 
and what is the atmosphere. Here I was clearly afraid of not making an important building. Uh, <laughs> then uh, there was a kind of catharsis of this panic, this fear, and I made bah, bah, bah. In these sketches, you can see a central space with light coming from up and uh, other things rather crazy, let's say. No problem, because if, if, you, if you pass in this phase for making crazy things, you will not make later, and later is more uh, dangerous. In this sketch, you can see a, a group of rooms, very regular. Probably it was exactly the reaction to that time passed of the monstrous things. And in, in the end, I like in museums very regular rooms with a good dimension proportions, sometimes with different dimensions, uh, but very regular in geometry, as you have here in the archives. And I, I could see in the end how flexible it is and how it's possible to divide it and to organize it in different directions the exhibition. Uh, here, the volume in the central sketch becomes more uh, controlled. Mm -hmm. I passed this period of adolescence in the project, and then there, there is a volume, high volume, and it ramps outside. And here, I was already rather uh, conscient of the problems with the program, with dimensions, and so on and so on. Uh, and then you can see different ramps. And uh, I realized soon that I did not have dimension, extension of building, to make the ramps only inside. So in solution adopted, half of the ramp between two floors is inside and half is outside. This is already a rather, uh, a sketch rather near, rather near the, the final solution adopted, the one in left. And here more. You can notice that uh, the, the ramps um, detached from the main volume, and then as the dimensions, the deepness of the ground is smaller and smaller. There are parts of program that can put be, be put there and small. Uh, and you see how the building, the whole building, detaches from the whole with the plants, vegetal investment that I did not want to touch because it was so beautiful, so. And then I saw, I made things that really a good car, a, a big car could go around. And in this part, there is a, a big lift that for service. Well, these volumes, I began working them and uh, things became more and more related with the reality of the plans of the program. And you see as back is a geometric with two perpendicular walls, and in the front there is a curve and the ramps. 
in this sketch uh, is a view of the interior where I thought to have a very high, uh, uh, all the floors, there are four floors, one underground and four floors. So uh, open space with light coming from up and in the back part, the, the regular, the geometric uh, uh, revestment, finishing of the building. And here already the users of museum can make a ball inside the big space with the rooms around, exhibition rooms. The, the ramps uh, began detaching from the volume with this round curved form and that way they make like an uh, outside hole to enter in this part of the building, in the building, inside the building. There are some small windows. These are like tubes that cross the space and there is a movement of visit with a series of three exhibition rooms and a smaller one, and then entering the ramp and coming down and then entering in the, by the interior in the other side. So it's a continuous parkour in zigzag coming down to the entrance. And there are, in the extremes, here and there, the vertical uh, connection with the lift and the stairs. You can see the, <coughs> the road, the marginal road, next to the river. And the, the passage behind with the big, big car going to the service lift, the detached the ramps, and what I call the uh, open air and open air hall, which is completed with this curve of the small volume, which is the cafeteria, and then two uh, studios uh, for uh, teaching of especially etching, as he was a great uh, artist in, in etching. So there are two studios. All right. The general plan. And you see that the whole natural, not natural, is the result of uh, taking stone from this hole, from this hole. There is a curve like this. And in the end, in the final solution, the curve on the river is like the symmetric of the curve of natural area. And in the back part is the opposite, is two plain walls uh, perpendicular, in, in a sense perpendicular. This is a one sense. And the, in the big problem, to, to make a, a parking in the impossibility of making it up. We got authorization just because the client, the promoter was strong, strong person, industry. The <coughs> one from Porto Alegre called Gerdau that has a strong industry of siderurgy. And so, he could get authorization to make the parking under the, the road. So when we arrive, there is a, a ramp uh, extension of parking and then going out again. And this is the area of parking underground. Here are the, the two ramps and from here, you can, through this passage, go straight to the surface and to the access to the museum. And also there are connections for interior parts, not public, for service. And in this area, you have 
the, <coughs> the vertical axis is here, that go up the building and there. And uh, then a small auditorium here and archives and storage. And then a library, a patio that takes down the light and the administration, secretariat, and so on. And here, the two studios, <coughs> duplex for invited uh, artists, young artists to learn. First floor, entrance, vertical accesses into extremes, beginning of the ramp, and the reception here and a, a shop and the big hall here. Cafeteria and the studios. All these parts are connected underground by a gallery. And from there you can go up to cafeteria or to the studios or to the building, the museum. And the, the ramp goes on, enters here, and then you visit. You visit, the, you, you cross the rooms for exhibition. It's one, two, three, and you get, you get again the ramp, and you go down like this. So in the other floor, the way is the opposite, is this. And in the center, the big space. The ramps go on. The organization interior is always the same, three rooms. Until the terrace, where you can see the, the light coming from the section with the parking and uh, here is the studios, one of the studios and the volume of museum and here the detached ramps Longit longitudinal section by those ramps and the model of the Finnish project. <coughs> and this is the third visit, I think, was already in construction, and they were making the underground parking and the underground area of the museum. They had to make half of the parking and then close it and open the other second part, half of the parking. And the, the building begins going up <laughs> and uh, here is uh, the second part of parking, and the other already covered, and then the traffic could be made without problems. And uh, the big delta, beginning of big delta, and uh, going up the building, the hole with this fantastic vegetation in Brazil, is not so such a problem to make not a, a brilliant architecture because the, the vegetation comes and invades everything. And even when you have a, a high building that is not so good, uh, you have very near Ponda Sucre or another big rock. So everything begins, becomes in scale. As it happens in another town I like very much, 
Hong Kong, where you can have a very high building, but the, in the end is the, the mountain, so the, the scale is proper for that town. When I worked in Macau, which is a small peninsula with a very small hill, the disaster was that they wanted to make as Hong Kong, and then they make the same high buildings, and the result was terrible. But here, I notice this tower very near, and I was not happy, and I said, why there is always a bad thing side by side with the, the site where we must work. <laughs> this is the, lens, the, the garage already finished, first part to be finished, uh, with the problem that uh, people liked so much that they wanted to make exhibitions already <laughs> here, and they said, no, please, please. Uh, construction go on, and here the tower, and the, the, the execution was extraordinary. They, they, they took this was in white concrete, with extreme caves, with the, the coffrage. Uh, when they finished the wall, uh, they put a, a canvas with water humid, so that it could be finished well, and uh, the, the, st the steel uh, was galvanized, everything was extremely well uh, constructed. This is a fourth or fifth uh, visit, and I wanted to go directly from the airport, and it was a great emotion when I saw the white volume or it apparent going through the offices of the builder and then the tower. But in this visit, I looked to the tower and I said, well, the fact is that the building is no more an isolated volume. Maybe that this tower becomes a friend of the building. <laughs> Uh, the, the owners were very happy with the building. I have a great support, always. Only they were preoccupied with this house. And they said, look, you have a fantastic view in front, and you close the building. What is this? And uh, I said, I must say, I also was a little preoccupied. But I said, no, no, can we? Sure, this works. You will see. <laughs> so, the exterior was already the concrete finished, very well executed, as you can see. With some parts very difficult, these angles, when the ramps detach from the main volume, really difficult to realize this well. Can you see? with an uh, impossible angle. And I entered, and uh, I already could see, not finished, the interior is not apparent concrete, the interior is revestment with a gypsy cartoon, of course, as, uh, we have to do always in the museums. And I could already see the most difficult in the phase of executive drawings thing that was the connection between the ramps. This was really complicated, or most difficult. When the ramp arrived to the wall and had the connection with the exterior part. As you can see here. And I entered, and I invited some sponsors to visit, as they had that 
preoccupation about the holes. But first, prudently, I went alone with the engineer. And I was comfortable because I saw light, there was much light. And then we arrived to one of the small holes, and I could see that the whole town, center of town, was inside. So the view was total for this side, and through this window for the other side. And the light coming from a very narrow opening in the top, in the roof, comes down and all is full of light. Is that also the light in, in Brazil or in this area in Brazil is very strong. You make a small hole and it goes in a wild way through. And I must say that after the finish, we had to put filters in the, in the light coming from the high because it was too much for the paintings. Or here you can see the whole delta. So then I invited sponsors and they came and went up and they said, ah, and everything was okay after that. <laughs> Meanwhile, we designed the furniture, so it was also a very kind thing. They asked me to design all furniture and to execute it. The auditorium is already finished, small auditorium. And the studio for the, which was in the house of Iberé for etching, was brought here and was already here working. Second part to be finished. Of the <laughs> then uh, the exterior already with the windows and finish and so looked freely the, the big delta and the, the the change of light was one of the very nice things in the, this building because in the in the end of the day the light becomes uh, red all these some days in winter is grease because it rains and it's cold in the, in the in the winter. Uh, we went to the outside hall and entered the building. Here. Uh, when there is an opening, most of people meet. It's not the case. This is still before the opening, but there are a lot of people here drinking. Uh, the entrance with the, the big glass to the exterior wall and stairs and lift to go up. And then the reception and wardrobe and the space goes up. Uh, these are the light. Uh, in the last floor, natural light and artificial light, and in the other, uh, uh, artificial light. But as the rooms are open to this part, uh, the whole day is not necessary to put the artificial light. In the, these are the benches designed for the, the hall. At the beginning of the ramp inside, then turning and going in the exterior part.
some people commenting the holes are not so small. And when we go through exterior and interior ramps, when we go inside, we can see the whole exhibitions. Uh, but then we can cross the rooms and see it by, by nearby. So many people, as it's usual, spoke about the influences and the references, finding the true reasons of the design. The true reasons, I hope I have explained, and are very different. But uh, evident for the critics was uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, because of the run. And it is true that when I was thinking the, the, the project, if someone came to my mind consciently, was, of course, Frank Lloyd Wright and the museum in New York. Uh, it is different because here you have not the whole ramp inside, so it's not uh, constant the view on the exhibitions, and it is uh, horizontal, the ground. Not because I don't agree with the Frank Lloyd Wright all in ramp with a genial solution, but because I, I cannot be so courageous, so I prudently are horizontal. And then you, we have like two times, one contemplate uh, looking to the whole, and the other inside the, the rooms, is a syncope. syncope. Uh, the other thing critics mentioned was Lina Bogardi with the tubes, we can see next. But uh, Lina Bombardi, I never thought in, in it during the, the project. There is this uh, recuperated building where she put tubes that have, in a way, same character. Uh, is, is two buildings and tubes connecting it, but they the, the, gives this uh, sensation of something crossing the space outside. But what I commented was that either me and Lina Bobardi, we had in our mind the tubes of the famous uh, factory in Holland made in the, in the 30s with these tubes. And uh, that when we are working and we are not exactly young, which is a pity, but it happens, uh, we, we don't make reference to one and two or three, because in our mind are years and years of looking to special things, very good things. And when, uh, in my time, not today, is different, when we began the studies, we had a fixation in one or two architects. And the, the parkour of the, the education was to know many more, so that this obsession would disappear and so that step by step, we have so many things inside our computer that we cannot more make copies. Uh, they came to help us when we need, many times uh, in an unconscious way, but it works. It's different today because when students begin, they have immediately all, all the, the information uh, access with access by uh, oppression, which sometimes can be too quick, but it works in a very accelerated way. This is an uh, exhibition that pl um, pleased me much from a Brazilian artist, the lady, uh, <coughs> that occupied with uh, this 
surfaces in patchbacks, the whole, the whole uh, space, uh, big space, central space. And I liked very much because in the dialogue between uh, critics, architects, and curators, sometimes comes this uh, kind of conflict. And if a museum building is beautiful, it gets for some people the air that the architect is make a competition with the artists. No, what if, if the exhibition is good, nobody looks to the architecture. But if the architect is proper as space, it's a defy, I think, a stimulus, uh, mainly today where the movement for making installations is so strong. And I was happy because some people said this space is good for nothing. Uh, first I said it's good for light to invade and good for brace to, be, to, to feel free in, a, in the middle of a, such a large space as we see everywhere in Brazil. But uh, here <coughs> it proves also that uh, to use the space of the museums is a, a, a problem of imagination. Sometimes not, sometimes museum is badly made, but I think this is not badly made, and these artists appreciated very much the possibility to have this space available. And here it is, I think it is final, final the uh, image and the evolution of construction, and thank you very much for your passion.